Right. Uh, good morning. So talking about uh, the issues of ICT. Uh, so as we discussed, the development of ICT produced so many, uh, so many problems or so many issues uh, to the entire world. So, so far we have, uh, we have finished so many issues which ICT has created over the years, right? So whenever there is an increment in ICT, you know, the diseases and other problems also increased, right? So we took uh, issues as categories and almost we completed all of them, except one or two, right? So let me take a quick uh, recap on what, uh, what we had on the previous classes, right? So we, we discussed about uh, legal issues, ethical issues, uh, environmental issues, and also physical, logical issues. What else? So social issues, and also we discussed health issues, right? So the last, the one which we discussed at last was uh, health related issues, right? Okay. Then in the latter part of the last class, we, we started another issue called malware. Malware or mal, uh, malicious program. Right, so we define the term malware as a, as a kind of software uh, that, that harms your computer. Generally, softwares uh, are used <clears throat> or softwares are developed by the people in order to give benefits. But this type of a software can do some bad things, can do some damages to computer. So remember, malware is a common term, right? used to describe uh, various kinds of harmful activities, right? So we know there are so many malware and malware uh, programs. So let me list them again. We have virus there, computer virus. And also we have worms or computer worms, Trojan horse, uh, phishing, what else? Adware, hijacking, spam, right? So we have many things. So let's take them one by one. So you may remember that uh, the first two, I think I explained about viruses and also I started to explain about worm. So though these things uh, do not take much time because you know, these are harmful softwares, all you need, all you need to remember is their, their characteristics or maybe their behaviors, right? They are enough. So it, it may not take much time, but understand them properly, right? Okay. So, we discussed or we started with virus, computer virus. So you must remember two things about virus, sometimes three, but two, two behaviors of virus are very important, right? So what are the two behaviors? First one, virus has the ability to replicate itself, right? So when virus comes to your computer, it has the ability to produce multiple copies, right? When it comes, it is alone, only one. Right, but after that, after the arrival of the virus, it has the ability to produce many similar viruses, right? That is called replication. So replication is there. Okay, right. The second uh, behavior is virus always uh, attach itself to another program. It never works as, a, as an uh, standalone program, right? So it definitely depends on the other. So when virus comes, it can come with pen drive, maybe uh, downloads, right? So it comes, but after that, even though it comes to your computer, right? Unless you, you uh, I mean, run it, there is no issue. Assume, listen to me carefully, right? So now assume that virus has arrived to your computer. It is available or it is inside of your computer. But if you don't click that virus, right? If you don't open the virus, there is no issue at all. There is no harmful to your computer. But if you click the virus, if you run the virus, then only your computer will be affected. So you may have a doubt, see? So I, I just mentioned that virus uh, affects when it is running or when it is clicked. So, you know, virus program, it is a program, right? It's a software. Virus program never, never be visible, right? You cannot see that virus on the monitor. So, 
if you don't see the virus on the monitor then how to click on that so you may have the doubt right so we don't see the virus on the monitor then how can we click right so listen to me so virus arrives arrives to your computer but virus is a symbol executable file you know that executable file right in grade 10 we discussed exe file so virus is so is always in exe file exe file means a file needs to be installed then only it works for example let me let me give a simple example say assume that you you have downloaded a game from internet from a website right you have downloaded a, a small game so that game is in, in your computer now you want to play that if you want to play that particular game definitely you need to install that you need to run that in your computer so definitely that that game exists as an exe file there may be a name right like game dot exe or something that is your file you cannot use that game uh, without installing so installation is important for any exe file even see the program that you are using in your computer uh, for for I mean uh, participating in this online class uh, is zoom application right so if you download that zoom application you know it is a program definitely that is in exe file so once it is downloaded from website that zoom application is in exe file can you use that exe file or can you use that zoom application now no never so that zoom application which exists in exe format should be installed have you understood so what i'm trying to say is so your virus comes to your computer as exe file you know games are visible but viruses are not visible so even though they come to your computer unless you click on that it never works see unless you click on that game it never works when you click the game starts installing and then work so similarly so now virus is there in your computer you know where it is right but definitely it is there but not my point which i already mentioned virus attach itself to another program so assume virus may attach itself in another program like game.exe so now virus has been arrived has arrived to your computer so assume that there is a game called game.exe you have downloaded uh, downloaded that game that is game.exe now what can happen is your virus can attach itself in this program game.exe you don't know right you cannot identify that so what happens now if you double click that game.exe for installing because you want to play the game so to play the game you have to install but when you play when you click the game.exe for playing the game or for installing the game now you are indirectly click the the virus too have you got my point you 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 can see the game.exe as a file as an icon you click on that game.exe but remember the virus also there virus attach itself but you are unable to see that so you you may think that you click on the game.exe but not don't forget that with game.exe that virus file also there if it is virus.exe or something now that also runs have you understood now only it is harmful now it starts affecting the computer because now that virus exe file is is uh, is clicked or is is installed so unless you click there is no harmful but it is uh, it is impossible uh, you can't say that we can't click or we never click on that virus because we we never see that so if you never see the virus program then how can we safe you cannot avoid clicking the other other applications right you always click so it is possible that the virus is is uh, always uh, running right so whenever you click a folder even it can uh, attach itself in a folder so when you click the folder it can be clicked the virus can be open right so remember that point that is the meaning of it attach itself to another program if it doesn't attach 
you know, it, it, it never survive. It cannot uh, do its task. So that's the reason why it also always attach itself with another program, right? So these are the two points that you should remember about virus. First one, first one, it has the ability to replicate itself in, in multiple copies. Second one, it attaches itself with another program, right? Another program, it never uh, stays alone. Have you understood? So these are the two points to be remembered. But if you can remember the, the methods or the ways in which a virus can spread, right? So I, I mentioned some of the ways, you know, the removable storage devices are always uh, away, right? So such as pen drives, CDs, right? External hard disks. So if viruses, viruses are there in, the, uh, in those devices, you know, they can come to your computer uh, through these devices. The other common method is downloads, especially the attachments of emails, some other uh, untrusted uh, websites, right? You, you may visit to some untrusted websites, so they may have viruses. So when you visit, viruses can automatically come to your computer, okay? So these are about computer viruses. Then, then we discussed about worms or computer worms. Right. So I told you that worm may be harmful because worm never attach itself in another program. Right. Alone it works. See, virus depends on the other. So virus needs maybe another program like a game or MS Word or Excel to attach. Then only it, it, it will be clicked by someone. So it, then only it can work, but this worm can stay alone, can, uh, can exist alone as a file, right? As, as a complete file, and it can, it can uh, affect your computer, right? That is one of the major characteristics a worm has, right? Try to compare the virus and worm to, to, to remember the points, right? The second characteristic of a worm is the replication, right? Worm also has the ability to replicate, like virus, right? Virus and worm can replicate themselves, right? So if a worm comes to your computer, it can, uh, it can create multiple copy, but you know, worm can stay alone. So it, it, never, needs, uh, it never needs a human interaction to come. Even it never needs an, another human to go outside. So it can come automatically uh, to your computer, right? And do some damages. It can stay alone in your computer. And also it can spread to another computer. So hope you remember I mentioned that the network or maybe internet is the vital medium to travel, right? Uh, to travel along, uh, along computer networks. So this worm find the computer networks and it can easily spread to another one. That may be the reason why it gets name. I mentioned, right? So worm, you know, in, in real world, we can see worms in our environment. So they slowly move without making any noise. They slowly move from one place to another. Same thing happens here, right? So this worm comes to our computer without making any, any noise, without showing any symptoms, right? And then after that, it can move from my computer to another computer which is connected to uh, my computer, right? So this is worm. Remember, worm uh, has the ability to replicate, right? But it, it, it can stay alone as a file, okay? Right. So it is too harmful uh, because uh, it doesn't attach itself. So it is, it is harmful, right? Okay. Then uh, we have to discuss about Trojan hosts. Trojan horse. Right, look. So, first of all, I, I must tell you one char characteristic. After that, I will uh, explain its, uh, its behavior and other things. So, unlike virus and computer worms, Trojan horse doesn't have the ability to replicate. Right? It never replicates itself. If a Trojan host comes, it is only one. 
right? It cannot repeat again, or it, it cannot uh, produce similar copies. That, that, that must be the point to be remembered. But let me explain the, explain the term Trojan. See, this term is familiar to you because you might have heard a story uh, which, which, I mean, which uh, took place in, in the ancient times in uh, old or ancient Greek, right? In ancient Greek, there, there was an incident or there was a story all, always, I mean, uh, spoken. See, that, that's the reason why it gets the name. Okay, let me explain the term Trojan horse first. After that, I will move to the story and, and tell you the connection between this Trojan horse and uh, that story, right? So here the Trojan horse is a malware. It shows itself as a useful program to the user, right? As in a, in a first glance, it shows itself as a useful, as, a, as an application software like that. It shows itself to the user, maybe an attractive icon. So it shows itself as a useful program, like a game or like any other application software. But See, when it shows itself as a, as a useful software, you know, we always start using that because we feel that the appearance of its uh, icon or maybe its window is it's, it's familiar and it's uh, attractive. So you may try to use that. So when you, uh, when you try to use that or when you, uh, when you uh, click on it, so it starts doing some damages to your computer. It can, uh, uh, it can uh, observe your sensitive data like uh, passwords and other things, right? Without knowing you yourself, it sends all of them to other people through internet, right? So at, at first it, it shows itself as a harmless, useful program to you. So when it is shown like that, you, you, you think that it is a good program. So you, you never feel anything about, uh, I mean, malware. So that's, that's the reason why it shows as a useful program, because if it is suspicious, definitely you try to delete or something. So, so it, it, it is a kind of cheating, right? So it like, it, it cheats you. So showing that it is a good program. So now you don't, I mean, uh, delete or you don't uh, remove that. So after, after some time, it, it starts some harmful activities. Most of the time, it captures some of the sensitive data from your computer. So whenever you enter passwords in emails or Facebooks, it notices everything and sends them to the other end, right? It can be connected with any other computer. So it sends those things. That is the, the Trojan host. That is the behavior of Trojan host. Now I, I tell you the reason for, for getting that name. So this malware gets that name. It is because of that ancient Greek, uh, Greek story. So you might have heard that story, right? It's a very simple one. Uh, in that ancient uh, Greek, you know, there was a war in between two, two parties or two, uh, I mean, uh, countries. So one country or one party wanted to cheat the other. Right? They, they, they want to fight. So one party uh, has a cunning idea and they want to cheat the other. So what they did was they made a wooden horse. They, they, they had a wooden horse, big horse. Uh, remember, this is not a real horse. It's a wooden horse. Right? So they, they told the op opponent that they want to present a wooden horse to them. Right? So what happened, they put the wooden horse maybe in the middle, middle of the city and inside of the wooden horse, remember that's a big horse, so inside of the wooden horse, the soldiers of that particular country were hidden, right? So it's a big horse, so the so soldiers of those uh, particular country were pushed inside, so they are hidden inside of the big horse. So now realize the situation, the opponent country definitely realized that they are, or that, that horse is harmless because that's a wooden horse. So they may think that it's a harmless, so they, they gleefully accept the gift, right? So it, because that is a wooden horse. But they don't know, or they didn't know the, the soldiers which were hidden inside of the horse. 
so when those soldiers or when the when the other component sorry when the opponent soldiers approach closer to that force these people who were hidden inside of the force started uh, attacking and killed them so this is the small idea behind that or uh, small story behind that uh, old trojanos that old uh, wooden horse was named as trojanos so even in that case also they they cheated because that wooden horse seems to be a harmless horse for the opponent so that's the reason why they allowed the horse to be to be located in the in the city in the middle of the city but when they don't con consider that as a harm harmful what happened they were demolished right exactly same here it comes to your computer and shows itself as a useful right harmless program so we don't care about it right we thought that it is a good program so when we don't care it is because of the uh, the behavior right it takes that opportunity to attack right so that's the reason why it got that name project host so hope you understood that idea so understands that it it never replicates okay so almost virus worms and trojan host almost uh, have similar characteristic there there may be different characteristics but almost similar even the way of attacking the the affection that they do to the computer almost similar right so even you can remove viruses and worms and trojan horses using uh, using antiviruses later we will discuss right so remember these three so whenever you study these three things try comparing and understanding this will uh, this will be the best uh, best best practice or better practice right so compare these three things and study everything right so let me show one uh, one thing before i check the other other malware right so look look at this malware sorry trojan horse a trojan horse is a type of malware that is often discussed as legitimate software right so which means it shows as a useful right uh, harmless program unlike virus and worm worms trojan horse doesn't replicate right it it never replicates itself right so look at this uh, picture this is uh, the trojan horse right the greek uh, ancient i think it's a it's a drawing or something but it looks like the uh, ancient uh, trojan horse right so it is a wooden horse uh, located in the in the middle of the city for i mean uh, presenting as gift to gift for the others but since it's a big big uh, object you know there is enough space for uh, hidden right so that is the old 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 story related to this malware okay right so next thing Right. So, any doubt in between these three? Does anyone have any doubt? So often you can be asked to differentiate virus and worm, right? So tell me one difference between virus and worm. Anyone? Give me one difference between virus and worm. Banija A. Give me one difference between virus and worm quickly. A virus uh, it attach attach itself uh, with another program, uh, but worms are not like that. Yes, right. That is the main difference. Virus always attach itself to another program, but worms don't. Right. Uh, what's the difference between a virus and trojan horse? Uh, Chibani. 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 Bargavi
பார்கவி பெனிலோ பெனிலோ அஸ்வினி uh it doesn't replicate yes virus replicates but trojan horse doesn't okay right no. okay listen the next one is uh, fishing listen to me so this is another one uh, often asked in exam right you can be asked uh, to write about fishing in exams so understand the fact clearly right so actually first of all i must tell you one more one important thing this phishing may not be a harmful software may not be a malware because it is a kind of illegal action it is it, it is an illegal thing it is a harmful action uh, harmful thing but remember this is not a software not a not a program it is a harmful activity harmful activity or harmful action which is carried out by people or maybe by uh, by organization so but in in your book this has been categorized as malware so take it as malware because we have to stick with the book but if you take it closely it is not the not the not a software it is an action you can understand this point when i when i finish uh, explaining this one right so wait wait until that happens okay so let me explain the term first or let me explain that uh, act action first look here this fishing is a, is an illegal activity where people are cheated to submit their sensitive informations to the others i repeat it it's an illegal action right which uh, often cheats the people right cheats the users or uh, public to to provide some sensitive informations like uh, bank details maybe uh, passwords some other sensitive personal informations so let me explain little uh, in detail little little further so generally this kind of an action is carried out using emails email is the main medium to conduct this illegal activity so i i i tell you what uh, how it will be carried out listen so as people we receive some emails from trusted friends or some popular some popular companies right we receive we we are public we receive some emails from our friends or from trusted big giant companies right so they those emails have some uh, content so have have some informations uh, for, for example see uh, you may receive an email from from your friend saying that uh, he is or she is uh in the abroad but she lost uh, his money right now she is at the airport so without money you know he uh, he or she cannot travel so now she requests you to to deposit some amount of money in a bank in his bank account or in her bank account but remember that mail has been sent from that exact friend you know his or her email account so now you check the email so that that mail came from that particular friend but now that that particular mail has an urgent message to you saying that he or she lost all the money right he has to travel now so he is an, at the airport so he asked or requested you to deposit uh, some amount of money so since that person is in uh, urgent condition urgent status without realizing much right uh, without uh, without making that uh, sorry make, without inquiring much about that incident you try to deposit 
because in your mind that male came from a particular person particular preference so in your mind you trust it right you trust that the person is is the one who is there so you don't have enough time to uh, to ask your friend other friends about his uh, his or her status so immediately you try to deposit because you know we all use uh, online banking nowadays so without much delay you you try to deposit that but remember that mail or that particular information has been sent to you uh, not by that person not by your friend someone has tried to show that the mail came from that particular address right you know there are ways to to modify the emails right so some algorithms can be written to show that the mail come from another person right so the original sender was another person of course he saw her mail address may may be different but he he has shown that the mail came from your friend exactly same right this mail address is same right but when you deposit that money to the account you know that that money will uh, go to another person's hand this is called phishing so it is a kind of cheating see you in this in, in, uh, instance you trusted that mail it is because of the of the sender uh, uh, sender so here the sender is your friend so you trusted that one because it is friend so you did it if if the mail came from uh, unknown person then you don't care about, care about it definitely you will take that as serious but now in this instance they they cheated you this is one of the most common phishing activity even the people in this part of the world also affected right most of us receive such mails all the time so assume you see uh, let me take this simple incident see assume that your friend one of your friends has gone to the abroad right for a for a trip or something now she or he is in abroad see somebody knows this matter somebody noticed this uh, this traveling or trip and if that person has the ability to do this kind of illegal activity now he can do that so now that illegal person sent a mail to you saying that i am in that particular abroad maybe uk right i went to a trip but i lost the money purse or something uh, to uh, please send some uh, sorry deposit some money so now this mail came from your friend email so now thing as 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 a friend thing about your situation now you know your friend is in abroad you know the friend has been uh, uh, gone to uk so now without really realizing much thing definitely you will deposit this is one fishing the let me give me one uh, let me give one more fishing activity right so i am taking some time to explain because whenever examples are given you know they help uh, to remember the topics right so that's why i'm taking some examples so let me give one more uh, common phishing activity this is one of the most commonly used uh, commonly seen activity there may be another one so here uh, so i already told you that phishing is conducted using email and also mails are sent from uh, friends or trusted uh, companies right popular companies so look here now assume that you got right you got uh, an email from one of the popular banks in sri lanka right so okay let me use a name assume that you have an account in uh, commercial bank of sri lanka so you have an account there so now that mail uh, has been sent to you by the bank saying that uh you uh, your credit card uh will be expired soon please click the following link to renew that account right you got a mail from commercial bank that mail has a link right so 
above the link there is a sentence maybe a threatening sentence saying that the deadline is very soon right so deadline comes soon so please renew your account right your credit card account by clicking the following uh, link so now think about your mindset right once you read this message uh, you will be in a hurry because that the deadline is very soon that that's the that's the reason why i use the word threatening sentence so there may be threatening so deadline is there so now you all realize so you realize that it is the time to renew you cannot uh, delay that so what happens without but you you have to check the what uh, check the mail address the mail which uh, has been sent right so definitely the mail address same as your commercial mail right so when you check the email address right so rea you you realize that the mail has been sent from commercial bank so you you trust it right you you trusted that mail so you realize that your account is going to be expired so definitely you will click the link so when you click the link it may ask some of the sensitive information about you like the credit bar, credit card uh, details like credit card number some other uh, codes right so some your some of your other personal informations maybe your username password it will be asked you have there may be a small online form appeared right so you have to enter username password credit card number and then there may be a button called submit so after filling those information you have to click on uh, submit so when you click on submit you know all these informations are sent to another computer another server another person what happened now another person right actually the person who sent that mail is not commercial bank maybe another organization or maybe another person sent that mail in commercial bank's name right so again they they modified that uh, algorithm and showing the the sender as commercial bank so it is because of the commercial bank you trusted but the actually the link never belongs to commercial bank the the link may not may be related to another server so when the online application form is submitted all of your details are sent to another computer maybe in the illegal person's hand so now see now you know you lost your vital information right you you gave your username passwords right uh, credit card informations they are very harmful because that person can withdraw money from your account right so this is another most common attack so whenever you even you may you may face such problems in the future if you use email now you 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 may have the problems even now also right so you may be very very careful whenever you use emails right you you can come across such emails so whenever you receive an email like uh, this person received from commercial bank you have to be very careful because you know no bank no institution asks passwords right no institutions so or no organization asks username passwords and credit card details they never know them even the bank who issued that credit card number or sorry that uh, password or username they never the bank itself never knows so as a student or as a person you should understand that these institutions never ask usernames and passwords from customers so if someone asks you must be very alert so now you should realize that it is someone else's work not the bank's work have you understood so this is one one of the other instance so there may be so many phishing activities can be but this may be the most common attack right often almost all the email users face this right so we have to be alert so let me show one of the uh, phishing uh, message which has been sent from one person to another let me show one sample then only you can uh, remember that forever so let's see that look here Yes, sir. so here there is a mail see this mail has been sent to a student who is studying in a university right this has been sent to a university student the mail came from the university 
right? The original email of the university, right? So let's read the mail. Dear network user, this email is meant to inform you that the, sorry, that your my university network password will expire in 24 hours. Please follow the link below update your password. Sorry, follow the link below to update your password. So what happened? This has assumed the student uh, uses uh, LMS or something, you know, LMS, right? We already discussed about grade 10 in grade 10. So, you know, this student may use LMS or something, right? Uh, given by particular university. Now that you, the student received the message, received the mail saying that your LMS account will be expired within 24 hours. Look here, they always give a deadline then only you will be in a hurry to fill that or hurry to submit right so 24 hours uh, click the following link it, it looks like that university maybe some alternation there right so university url or something so you please click that link to update so when you click that it asks something maybe it definitely it asks your username password and other things right so without realizing you will give your lms username passwords submit now those informations will be in the hand of another person that is never be sent to the university this is exactly the same thing uh, which i explained earlier in this case it's it's not um, money related thing or something right it may be related to your studies or other things but it is possible everywhere but mostly they attack uh, users to get money because you know money is the most important thing right so that may be the uh, reason why this uh, phishing is conducted okay so hope you can understand such thing by looking a message like this okay right okay let's check the definition or the description which i gave phishing is the attempt to obtain sensitive information such as usernames passwords and credit card details often for malicious reason by sending emails from trustworthy people or companies. Remember that, right? So often these mails are sent to another people from trustworthy people like friends and popular companies, right? So if mail come from them, then only people trust, right? To get the trust, they do this trick, okay? So this is called phishing. Now you realize that it is not the malware, it is a malware activity, right? So it's an action. It, it is not a program uh, which come, uh, come from another computer to your computer and do some bad things. It is a bad thing, it is a harmful activity. But remember, this is not a program, this is a kind of action, illegal action, okay? Right, right, then, okay. We have to take adware, adware, listen to me. Right, adware. So this term uh, has been formed from the term advertisements right advertisements that's why uh, adware what is it so adware first of all uh, remember this point adware may not be harmful as virus or worms or trojan horse or fishing right they are harmful right they are very dangerous because they do so many bad things but most of that where there may be some adware that may do some harmful activity, but mostly adwares are not harmful as the others. But uh, let me explain the behavior of the adware first. So generally adware is a small program which comes to your computer with some advertisements, right? So, you know, uh, when you, when you use websites, there may be some attractive advertisements bling on the on the web pages, right? Or even we call that as pop-up. Pop-up. Pop-up means 
some advertisements or some news is immediately displayed on the screen right so generally the screen has some other informations the advertisements suddenly displayed on the screen on the screen that is why it is called pop up right they are immediately up on the screen so there are some attractive advertisements like say uh, there may be an advertisement says that uh, you won 1 million rupee for in a in a lottery or something please click the following link to do something or some, such information so such advertisements often displayed but you 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 are busy with some other works you went to that website to do some other work but when you see such attractive advertisements saying that you won about 100 million dollar or something you definitely try to click that when it is clicked you know that adware comes to your computer without knowing you just click that advertisement right so when you click the program can be uh, can be downloaded and uh, saved in your computer this is how the adware comes to your computer okay when it comes okay after coming to your computer it monitors some of your uh, behaviors so like i mentioned earlier you often use uh, facebook you often use uh, online banking uh, you may use what uh, emails right so whenever you use uh, whenever you use such things you have to give some sensitive information those informations can be tracked by this adware this is only some of the adware not all the adware all the adware some of the adware can do such thing of course they are harmful right but most of the adware they come to your computer in this manner like a pop up advertisement or something after coming to your computer they monitor your your behavior of using websites you have your taste of websites so see some of we some of us often use uh, maybe e-commerce websites for searching some information we often search a specific product because you know you have interested in some see some of you often search uh, maybe dresses on internet so assume i i often search dresses on internet so now what can happen is this adware monitors or looks this pattern now my pattern see i have a pattern which is browsing uh, websites to to search uh, clothes so Uh, dresses so now this adware may monitor this pattern and pass that information to the at the end maybe to the computer in which or from which this is sent so here i don't have any big issues right so it is not harmful what's the reason for sending such pattern or business uh, sorry that behavior to the other it is for uh i mean improving the business so that that way might have been sent by a business company so they wanted because i am a customer i i'm i'm a person right i am a human being so so that particular institution or particular company wants to know my behavior consume consumer behavior so since i am interested on uh, purchasing clothes and uh, dresses right now that my my pattern has been tracked so now that particular company may uh, may target me on sending some uh, advertisements or maybe offers and everything to you to me through emails this is how they can improve their business but you know it never affects me have you understood right so mostly adware does such thing i repeat it adware is a small software which comes with advertisements which are displayed on websites so when an advertisement is is clicked this adware is downloaded to your to your computer after that it monitors your your behavior of using websites your taste in which uh, you you i mean follow all the time so it it captures everything and passes them to another computer or another person right it is because of improving their 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 revenue right because since they monitor 
my pattern the way of uh, behavior right so definitely they can make some uh, products which which can suit to me and send them as advertisements or some other offers or something right sometimes if i have interest i will definitely purchase so this is how they they improve their i mean uh, profit right so this is called adware so let me show one one adware first so you can understand that okay so this is one example for adware see look here congratulations you have been chosen to receive a free gateway desktop computer okay so there may be some attractive pictures so see the specification there intel pentium 4 256 right and this is an old old advertisements not the new one so click here to claim your free desktop computer so this is the one which i told you so now this kind of a small window you keep an eye on this one right there are some other other windows i take this window only right keep an eye on this window so when we see such advertisement this is a kind of advertisement so when we see such one on the website right definitely we will click because it is attractive so it's it just said that i want uh, a desktop computer so now as a, as a person definitely you will try clicking on this link right so when it is clicked you know that adware automatically comes to your computer have you understood so this is how adware comes so don't forget adware is a program small program which can uh, tracks our uh, behavior of uh, internet usage right the vis whenever we visit web pages it tracks especially commercial web uh, websites right we 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 often visit to some uh, business website right to to purchase so it tracks all these informations and send send them to the others okay right then okay so i take the hijack after that i will explain bot because both hijack and adware almost similar hijack right so hope you know this term right uh, in in our practical world hijack is a person uh, who is it is a person who uh, by four stops aircraft or maybe ship or something and take that uh, into his control right so that is uh, that is a one called hijack right hijack often uh, takes the control of a flight you know you might have heard stories right so sometimes hijackers suddenly entered into flight and took it in into the in their control and sometimes uh, even ships right ships can be taken to their control so hijack is the person who takes the control of air, aircraft and and ships to their control but here the hijacker is something different so because it is not the human they are human beings right so it is not the human being it is a small program right hijack is a small program so what is what happens when when hijacker comes to your computer look here so generally hijacker comes to your computer again through websites so when you use websites without knowing in in the previous uh, example so when you use uh, when, when we took adware so adware came to your computer when you clicked some advertisements some attractive advertisements but this is something different hijacker is not like that so, so hijack see when you visit to so visit to some untrusted website hijacker can comes to your web browser right it came or it comes to your web browser without knowing yourself so after coming to your browser it attach itself in the browser it stays in the browser so often it it makes some changes in the browser setting right it comes to your browser from websites it stays 
in the web browser and often changes browser setting. Mostly it changed the default uh, home page of the web browser. So you know whenever we open a web browser, uh, assume that you have a Google Chrome web browser. You know when you open a Google Chrome, we already studied about internet and email, right? You have idea. So whenever we open Google Chrome, it shows that Google home page or something. That is the default browser page. But what happens when hijacker comes to your computer, it, it changes the setting. The default setting was Google home page, but now it can change that into another website where the user has to uh, direct. So maybe another, web, uh, another commercial website like an e-commerce website. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes uh, it changes to another uh, malware websites, right? So your default home page is, is changed into another web page. Sometimes it's a commercial uh, business website. Maybe sometimes it is a malware websites. Have you understood? Even sometimes when you are trying to visit your website, assume that you type the URL on the web browser address bar, right? you type HTTP www dot, dot, uh, like XYZ dot LK or something. You wanted to visit a website, you type the URL. But what happened? If the hijack is there, it, it never allows you to visit to that particular website. It directs you to another website, right? So you wanted to visit www.xy.xyz.lk, you type the URL and press the enter key, but soon, soon after you press, you are, de you are redirected to another website. That website may be a commercial website, there may be a website which, which sells products. So what happened now, that particular hijacker, right, wanted to show you some business activities because their, their, their aim is making money. So they got your attention by redirecting this, uh, this URL to another. This is hijack. So now you can compare your uh, real hijacker, flight hijacker or ship hijacker with this one. So what happened? So you, you think about your, uh, I mean, uh, real hijacker, you, you are traveling uh, on, on, a, on a sea or maybe in an air, 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 aircraft. You have the way, you are traveling to another destination, but hijacker comes, ah, he re redirects. So you couldn't reach the point that you wanted to do. Exactly same here, you wanted to visit to your website, that's why you type the URL but hijacker comes and it redirects you to another website. So this is similar to the, our, our real hijacker, right? That's why it gets named. So now I, I, I hope that you can compare the real, sorry, you can compare the uh, adware and hijack. So adware is a small program which comes to your computer when an advertisement is clicked but once it, it, it is in the computer, it monitors your behaviors, right? And sends those information to another computer or another person. But hijacker comes to your web browser and stays there and adjusting the settings and it directs you to other website which you don't intend to, intend to visit, which you don't want to visit, right? So maybe both are related to advertisements, both are related to business companies, right? But the way of, uh, way of uh, attracting the users are different, right? Both in, in both cases, they want your attention, but they do in a different manner, okay? So this is known as hijack, okay? So today I explain about hijack and adware, Fishing and Trojan horse. Maybe the first two were explained in the last class, but I 
I took some time to, I mean, uh, recall again, right? So understand this malware. We have two or three malwares to come, but every malware is important. I took enough time to explain with, uh, with enough examples, right? So remember and understand these things. Uh, any, any questions to be asked? If you have any question, ask me. Right, so since none of you don't have, uh, none of you have any questions, uh, we, can, uh, we can stop the class at this moment. Uh, so as I told you earlier, past papers will be discussed from coming Friday, right? Uh, in, during these two classes, in one class, the usual lessons will be taken, will be taught. In the another class, uh, papers will be discussed I hope that uh, ICT and society may be the right choice to, to, to be conducted because uh, almost finished, you have everything in your mind and also it is, it is possible to conduct uh, as online. Um, but, uh, you know, problem solving, flowchart, pseudocode, Pascal program, programming paper classes uh, are not finished yet. But I feel that it may be better to conduct as, as, as uh, conduct that in a normal class. So if you, we have opportunity, right, if we have the chance to conduct in normal class, regular class, it is better. Uh, that's why I, I post that uh, for a while and take this one, right? So it's enough. Uh, meet uh, on Friday, right? Thank you.